Okay, in this video, I'm going to try to use a Cast TI Inspire um, to solve systems involving conic sections. And I have to admit to everybody, I, try, <laughs> I tried one today and I got all the way through the whole thing and I realized uh, that they didn't intersect. But I, I think these ones do, so I'm real excited about this. So, this is what I, I want to do. I want to solve systems involving conic sections. I want to um, solve this system that you see right here. I don't need to read it to you. You can read it. But could you do me a favor? Could you stop the video long enough to write this down? Get your calculator turned on. Get to your home home screen. It's the <laughs> it's the screen that we press the button. It looks like a house. Um, we're going to be using the we're going to be using the solve function. We're going to copy and paste the function, and then we're going to save the function um, on your system. Oh, but I should have said on on your cast, not of your cast, but on your cast. Uh, then we'll use the graph function, and then we'll use the analyze function of your cast. This is why this video, I think, is important to you. Uh, this video is important because some equations must be graphed differently than functions, and I hate when that happens. Don't you? Um, so let's try to move on here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go go to your home screen, go to choose calculator. So we're going to choose calculator. And then we're going to put these functions from here. It's going to get pretty easy, but let's just type the function and we're going to type in solve this. So it'll be, uh, you notice when I typed the E, it went, the font went from italic to standard font. And that tells you that your calculator recognized that you were asking it to do something. So it's 9y squared minus 4x squared, a hyperbola, maybe? I don't know. A hyperbola. Uh, we're going to solve this in terms of y, and the reason that we're doing this solving it in terms of y is so we can put it into, so we can graph it. We can't graph it in the, in the form that it's in right now. So we had to solve for y, but look what happened here. It got kind of weird looking, didn't it? Because if you think about what this looks like, it's a hyperbola. It has this section here that looks like a parabola, and then it has another one at the bottom that looks sort of parabolic, and I'm not using probably the best words to describe them. But now what I want to do is this. This is the two functions. This is the... These are the two equations of the function, the top one and the bottom one. All, all I'm going to do here is just, I just highlighted it. I drag my cursor over it, and I'm going to hit this copy button. And I'm going to copy it to here, and I'm just pressing the button here, and it says paste, and paste. And then all I'm going to do here is hit control, store. And I'm going to call this one f of x, if you don't mind. f of x. And if it does, it should say done. And then what I'm going to do is, so I have the negative one here, so I'm going to take the positive side here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to gather it. I'm going to copy it, right? I'm just pressing the buttons to copy it here. I'm going to move my cursor here, choose this section, hit the right cursor, hit paste. And again, I'm going to, so, going to define this as a function. So I'm going to hit control here, the red button, store. See the S-T-O there, store. I'm going to name this one G of X, just so it's easy for me to remember here in a second. You're going to see what's going on here. So there's the first function. I defined it as f of x and g of x. And then the second function is actually a circle, if you remember. And what I'm, I'm going to do the same thing with that when I'm going to solve that in terms of y. So I hit the solve. I type out the word solve, and I'm going to type in my function, which was x squared plus y squared. y squared is equal to, and if you look at the equal sign, it's right, yeah, right here, right? It's equal to 25. This comma is, means in terms of, so it's asking me, do I want this in terms of x or y? I want it in terms of y so I can graph it. And I'm just going to hit enter there. And then you see that this one is defined twice also. So I'm going to pick up both definitions. I'm going to move my cursor to here. I'm going to highlight. Whoops, that's what I did wrong. Make sure I get that negative sign there. Right? I'm hit right here. Whoops. Do it again. Copy. And then go here. I'm going to put paste right there. Paste that there. And then control, yeah, control, store. This may seem a little bit arduous, but once you see what we're going to do, it's actually pretty cool. H of x, so I did that one, right? Now I'm going to do the next one is i of x. So I got the negative one here. Here's the positive one here. I'm going to highlight that. Same thing again, copy and paste. Bring my cursor down, put it here. Right click, so paste. Define it, control, store. You practice this enough times, you'll get really good at it. It's really helpful uh, when you're taking exams 
to really, really be good with your calculator. So here we are five minutes into our video and you're like, oh my God, have we gotten anything done yet? But we have. So we have our functions defined, f of x, g of x, h of x, and i of x. So check me out here. And I'm gonna go up here to your home screen, pick graphs. Oh, this is a new uh, uh, TI Inspire CX cast. All the functionality is the same as what you have. But I will say, if you haven't upgraded your uh, software, you should um, hook it to the computer and you still get free up upgrades. You should be on, on uh, two point something. So if you're on one seven or, or whatever, upgrade now. So this is all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start to graph this. I'm just gonna type in F of X. Remember we defined that. And there's that. And then remember we had G of X was the other one. So we'll put in G of X and there's the hyperbola. Right there are those two pieces. And then we had H of X, didn't we? H of X. All right. And this is the thing I told you. This is the little tricky part, the important part, that some equations must be graphed differently than functions. So that's all I'm showing you right here. Um, there is no way to put a circle in as a function. Uh, you can just draw a circle, but if you do and you try to find intersections of it, it doesn't recognize it. So you have to do it this way. So that's G of X. Am I at I of X, you guys? Yeah, I of X, right? I of X. And hit enter, and there's that. So it's kind of a tennis ball or maybe a basketball, depending on where you are. Okay. So maybe you're not that impressed, but here's the good news, is that six minutes into this, you should have gotten pretty good at this. And now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to our, our tools. And if you're in the tools and you drag down to analyze the graph, then what we want is the intersection. And this is asking us to choose a graph. So sure, we'll, we'll take this one first. Uh, and then the second graph is the blue one. Now this is a little bit important. You can see that to the right of that little hand, that's where the things intersect. When I ask for a lower bound, they're asking for a, for a place to the left so the computer will know where to look. So there's to the left, and now they're looking for an upper bound. That just means a place to the right of it, and there's our number, okay? So that was pretty quick, and we're just gonna do that three more times. So analyze graph, intersect, pick a graph. Sure, we'll pick this one again, sorry. So second graph is the blue one. Now looking for a lower bound and upper bound, so we're looking for about here, aren't we? Because our point is to the right of here, so lower is left of, and upper bound is to the right of. So there's that, got that thing done. Guess what we're gonna do now? We're almost finished. Analyze graph, we're gonna find the intersection here. Choose a graph, it's the purple one. I hope you, hopefully you see that the purple one and the blue one are different parts of the same thing, aren't they? Second graph is the green one. Right, and now same thing, lower bound is a point to the left of the intersection, upper bound is a point to the right of the intersection, so we did that one. Last one, we're almost there. Let's see if we kept our word to each other. Intersection, first one, first graph here, second one is the purple one, lower bound means to the left, right, it's on the interval. Upper bound is to the right, so if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, it's asking you for that piece of information. We're at eight minutes and we are done, so Look, this is really helpful, and the more that you mess around with your uh, computer, uh, your calculator, the better you're going to get with this thing. So you really have to be playing these games with a calculator, and, and I would say, uh, you know what, go on Texas Instruments uh, site, and you'll see my last name, Lindelof, L-I-N-D-E-L-O-F, and I've done a bunch of videos trying to, a bunch of uh, workshops showing how to use this thing, and if you get good at it, man, it, it will really pay off for you. So I hope this was helpful. Ciao.